Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today we are going to go through some submissions from you guys. Over on my Patreon, I recently transitioned that platform to be all about art critique and giving you direct feedback on your art. So in this video, I'll be going through and critiquing art and doing a little draw over and going through areas of where these submissions can be improved. So if that's of interest to you, then keep on watching. So I do have a couple of other videos that I've done similar to this in the past. Because this is a new venture, I am still tweaking the format and honing in on my feedback skills and teaching skills. This is a new area for me, so I'm still learning and figuring this all out. If at any point in the video you feel that I could improve some areas, uh, maybe I'm missing out on something completely different that I haven't even thought of, pop it in the comments below. I want this series to be of value to you guys and be really useful, so if there's something that I missed out, pop it below and if you enjoy it leave a comment and thumbs up as well and also just a little disclaimer I'm not saying that my suggestions are the penultimate correct suggestions I'm just going to be going through a list of what classic art rules are and whether or not these will be applicable let's just head into it so you understand what I'm talking about and yeah let's look at these art submissions Okay, so the first submission that we have today is from Ashley Thompson. Thank you, Ashley, so much for submitting your art. I'm really excited to go through it because it's really, really beautiful. So I've asked my patrons to give as much information as possible. I've given them a bunch of questions to answer so I just have a bit more context and understand what their art goals are, mediums, what they'd like to improve, etc., etc. It just helps me to know exactly who they are and how I can help them. So. They have mentioned their art goal is to raise awareness of marine and ocean conservation through pieces that can connect you to animals. The goal is to demonstrate, enhance or realize the beauty of nature and animals. To me, I feel like this is really admirable and really beautiful and a really great purpose for making artwork. When you're on your art journey, sometimes you can get really lost with what your purpose is. When you do feel lost and you wonder like why you're even on your art journey, why you make art, it's really nice to have a reason to make art this is a really great admirable reason to make art it feels like contributing in some way whether it be in more discourse so Ashley congratulations the mediums you've used to create this artwork are prismacolors on wood so let me just go through and describe what I see and then we'll go through and get into the nitty-gritty here we've got an oceanscape on a lovely sunny day. You can see that with the sky and the several suns, there is communication of a passage of time. And that's also corresponding to the three turtles down the bottom, communicating time being passed through in the artwork. You can see on the bottom here, there are three turtles. One's a baby turtle, teen aged turtle, adolescent stage, and then eventually full adult stage turtle turtle but it's met with rubbish and pollution in the ocean. So that's great correlating to your purpose of trying to communicate a really beautiful scene but then also advocating what your message is into your artwork. Like I said before, really great messaging, really good reason to create, really honest and passionate and I'd like to just see you evolve that and really stick to that and I just, I'm already seeing so many different combinations of artworks that you can create with this mantra and reason for why you want to make art. Okay, let me go into a list so we can really delve deep and uh, I can pinpoint and go through a couple of things of where I think this artwork could be improved in both your messaging but also on a technical level as well. I've got a list here of things that make up an artwork. So I've got color, line, light value, shape, composition, etc. So I'm just going to go through them. Okay, so color, first of all, colors are beautiful. Lots of lovely blues. You've got the more cool blue and then the, that really lovely warm ocean blue. Lots of pastels, which is really lovely, really pushes the romanticism that you have mentioned that you wanted to push into your artwork to highlight the beauty of nature. Um, I think you've successfully done that in what your goals were set out to be. I'll get into more specifics, but I think right now you've got a really great use of color. I think you understand color quite well. I don't think you have an issue in color. I think there may be a little issue in values, but we'll get into that in just a moment. So next 
up we've got line. I can tell you've got a really natural way of like moving lines in your piece. The water has lots of lovely like fluid lines in it. It also kind of correlates to the lines that are going on in the sky. I think that also goes into the romanticism of it. It's nice and soft and flowy. Light and values. I do feel that done a really good job values into the main turtle here that's met with rubbish. I think you've done a really great job of the blue reflection of the ocean onto the turtle's skin. I think that's done really well. What I'd like to see more of is some more depth in the ocean and also in the sky. I know that you have demonstrated with this turtle that you, you do have an eye for light and depth. I'm just missing it a little bit in the ocean and just the landscape part of it, which I know is something that you have mentioned in your question. So we'll get into that in a second. Okay, shape and composition and space. My main worry with this piece is that feel that the composition position doesn't have a natural flow to it. I understand what you're doing with this artwork where you want to show the passage of time. I, I don't know if putting it into one artwork is necessarily the best way to go about it. I'm kind of seeing three different artworks in the one artwork here. I feel like you could make it this almost a triptych in a series where these three pieces can all work together. So one highlighting the more baby turtle and infantile stage and then the mid stage and then being met with the ocean garbage. Okay, I do have some suggestions for the values, perspective and composition. So let's start drawing and I can tweak and demonstrate what I feel that could be highlighted a little bit more to really push that romanticism, push more flow into the piece. Uh, so let's get to it. Now, when you submitted this artwork, Ashley, you you also submitted a cropped version, which I actually feel that this cropped version, I think makes for a better artwork compositionally. One of the struggles that you mentioned with this artwork and what you wanted to improve was, biggest struggle was technique with the clouds and waves in the water with the split sky and water view. And they've also mentioned that they want to improve their skyscapes because they have lots of ideas of wanting to do a lot more sky pieces and they like to improve their clouds as much as possible and also like I mentioned earlier their preferred medium were uh, colored pencils. I definitely think it's possible to create skyscapes with pencils. It just requires a lot of lighter softer pencil um, marks and I think with a pencil you need to do lots of very light little circles and then layer it just like an acrylic painting. Pan pastels could be really good for clouds because they're very similar to colored pencils. They're a nice dry chalky medium, but I think they may render the results that you would prefer. You get a lot more surface coverage and it's just a lot softer, which matches the texture of a cloud. So although I do think it's possible to do it with a pencil, I would say be open to experimenting with pan pastels. Okay, so. To improve clouds, imagine you're underneath a table and you're looking up. The perspective of it would be somewhere along the lines of this, right? So your vanishing point is over here and you're looking up. So you're seeing the underside of a cloud. So first of all, to really push that perspective, I mean, you can kind of cheat with clouds a lot of the time because you kind of just want to give a vague semblance of perspective. You've done it a little bit at the back here and you've like made the things further in the distance, like smaller and flatter. I think thinking of them as looking up and maybe even drawing in your perspective lines will help to sell the 3D perspective of it a little bit further. So just to recap, remember, I suggest possibly using pan pastels for softer clouds if you are open to experimenting and to also remember your vanishing points and perspective with clouds. A good way to remember it is by thinking or imagining that you're underneath a glass table. Now, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to chat further about composition. Right now, I feel like the composition is very flat because it's very one Two, you know, it's like split in the middle. It's missing a bit of drama. And I understand from what you mentioned that you want to highlight and really show the beauty of landscapes and nature. And I just feel like it needs more drama. 
Okay, so how are we going to get more drama? So I've collected this image on the right here as an example of things that I think your artwork could benefit from. So one, it's a good example of the split in the middle and kind of cutting the water with the sky. It's always a good idea to just see exactly how something is meant to be represented. And I think that really exaggerated curve is something that I feel that your artwork could uh, benefit from as well. Another thing the photo shows an example of is the depth in the back of the ocean. So just giving a little bit more contrast in the depth and the background and that'll just push the drama into your piece quite a bit more. So I'm going to go through and edit and draw over a couple of uh, the elements in your piece. Uh, I'm going to cut out a few parts that I think could be blown up like the toothbrush and I'll also be painting over the clouds and adding um, a little bit more contrast in the depth of the ocean and adding some highlights into uh, where the sun meets the ocean as well. So this is the final result. Some suggestions that I think could benefit the artwork to really highlight the drama and really push the beauty and just go back to all of the goals that you were wanting to achieve. When it comes to landscapes, make sure everything is really uneven and there's a lot of contrast in your values. It really helps to just sell the depth a lot more and it just makes things a little bit more satisfying to look at when there is a little bit more contrast. The depth that you've put into the hurdle you've demonstrated that you are capable and you do have the skills to do that it's just a matter of learning exactly where that needs to go when it comes to landscapes and putting those skills to good use Okay, everybody, I hope that was helpful for the first submission. Now we're going to go into the second submission, which is by an anonymous submitter. Now, before we head into it, there is a mild content warning, some mild nudity, and also the position of the character is in a more provocative, sexual position. So if you do have children around or if you are a child watching this, please ask your parents if this is okay or uh, I would probably just turn it off if you are underage. Or if you have small children around, uh, please kindly escort them out. Okay, first I'll just read out what the submitter has given me so there's some context and we understand what the goals and intentions of the artwork is. So art goal, create something very feminine with softness and curves and to hero the female body. So the mediums used with this one is the Ibis Paint app with the Note 8 and the stylus that's given with the Note 8. Identify what I see here and then we'll, just like the other one, we'll go through the list of everything and see what can be improved and what things are done really successfully. Here I see a black and white illustration, girl floating on a cushion or a cloud uh, with a starry scape in the background, giving lots of as the kids like to say, insta baddie vibes. Pin up -y, oh, and obviously it has a female figure in the middle who is pulling on her underwear and she's in a very sexual, lolita, coquette-ish position. Your intentions for the piece were to hero the female body. I think you've done that very successfully. Uh, you also mentioned that you liked a bit of surreal, a little bit of nymph alienness in it. I can see that with the pointy ear that you've popped in. I think it's very successful in its, its escapism, the luminous celestial feminine vibes are portrayed really strongly in this piece and like I said before it's got a really sweet coquette-ish innocence to it uh, a real lolita sweet vibe I know that's a little controversial that's why I gave the content warning I also really like with the choice of hair that you've given uh, with the big ringlet curls it reminds me of like Baroque era, Marie Antoinette, very like uh, flouncy and fresh, leaning on the opulent, very feminine style. So all of your choices that you've uh, chosen for this piece uh, definitely go well with the language that you were trying to communicate. So well done. I think that's uh, you've nailed it when it comes to all of that. And I generally think like when, with your anatomy, yes, it could be a couple of tweaks like you mentioned and we'll go through those soon. Um, but otherwise, I think um, it's got a lot of good movement and flow in the piece. So let's go through our objective element list of uh, things to chat about. Okay, first off is color. No, no color in this. Um, I know color is something that you want to uh, learn more about. So we will get into that in a bit. 
line work, I think you've done a really great job of using the heavier lines around the body to uh, really pull focus and have a focal point on the main character. The line work, although very subtle, is a lot lighter in the background. So line work in the background is a lot lighter compared to the line work that's here which is great i think you've got a good natural uh instinct when it comes to that okay so your light and values because it is just an outline there isn't that much that i can go off when it comes to your light and values I know you do have some very slight shadow here, some shadow around the neck. So picking a light source, we can go somewhere around here, start to fill it in. Even with um, initial sketches, it's always helpful to put in where you're gonna place your shadows just because it just give that illusion of light, even if you are just not actually coloring in the shadows, but just portraying them with a, with a couple of lines. Okay, so this piece has just a central composition. I do feel like it could move over slightly. The way that I'm seeing this is that a line in the middle and there's equal space between here. So these two spaces equal the same just to create uh, more balance between it all. Because she is right in the middle, I would just say like when you are picking the space that goes around a whole piece, you just need to pick what your focal point is and just work your way around. All right, so let me just go through and answer your questions with what you wanted help with first. So you mentioned you had struggles with feet, hair and the lips, struggled with the background and color, but you'd prefer to just focus on color first. Okay, general rule of thumb with hair, I just like to add more hair than is realistically there to be quite honest, especially because you're trying to push that hyper femininity. So I actually think you've done a pretty good job with the hair. Um, you've got a nice instinct for the curls already and you've got a nice instinct for just like the loose waviness. You're chopping off a little bit of skull. So I actually feel like the back of the head, although I understand it's being foreshortened because it is at that angle, I still think adding more hair just helps to not chop off that little bit of the skull. So let's move some stuff around here. So with the hair, I just think block out your hair a little bit more. Think about the overall silhouette. Think about it in shapes instead of thinking about them in little details. Maybe just observe a bunch of other silhouettes of hair so you can memorize them and replicate them in your own pieces. Okay, so another thing you mentioned were the lips. I actually don't really have an issue with the lips that you've got here. You've put in the depth quite well in where the lips open. It's got a really cute pout. There's honestly nothing that I would really change when it comes to the lips. I just think maybe when it comes to like all these tiny little details, you could just simplify them a little bit more and get rid of them. Okay, so after a bit of fussing around and drawing, I'll talk through a couple of the changes that I made with this sketch. Firstly, I blocked out the hair. I just gave it a little bit more volume and thought about the hair more in blocks rather than little details like I mentioned. So a good way to think about hair is think of it like a ribbon, especially because it's being tied into this ponytail. I just wanted to think of each little block of hair like it was its own individual ribbon. I then went and tweaked the eyes slightly. I just wanted to angle the eyes a little bit more just because the face was angled down. You haven't mentioned wanting to tweak that much in the face so I didn't want to touch it but what I did think the piece needed was uh, a lot more light and shadow. So I also placed in the shadows. It looked like there was an over top shadow. So I just wanted to place that in and pop that on the body. I've thought about the socks as each individual crease. You've got to think of it like a tube. You can see the lines that I've placed in here. It's almost like there is a little tube wrapping around the fabric. So that's the easiest way for me to try and explain that really, really briefly. And I've also angled the foot back, the other position of the foot, just felt a little bit cramped and flexed. Now with the colors, you mentioned that you were a little unsure about colors. I just kept the colors really, really light. So I thought a good way to start introducing color into your work is to think of it like toned paper. Just start with like a light beige wash over the whole thing and then build upon there. Adding color onto white can be very daunting and there's nothing to really bounce off of. And then I just went in with some light pinks 
and some light blues, keeping it very, very minimal. If you are really unsure with how to start introducing colors in, just take little baby steps. I also think the pastel colors and the really light washes suit the goal of what you wanted to achieve. So I kept it really light and feminine and fluffy. Yeah, and this is the final result. Okay, you guys, I hope those two submissions were useful and you learnt a couple of things. If I've missed something and there's an area that you think I've completely glazed over, let me know and comment below. And if you liked the way I've been formatting these videos, also let me know if this is really helpful. If it's not helpful, let me know as well in the comments. Okay, guys, remember to give the video a thumbs up if this was of value to you. If you would like to be included in this video series, head over and become a patron. Every month I will be going through and giving one-on-one -on -one feedback to you guys as well as including you in these videos. I am still tweaking a couple of things but when I receive a submission I'm going to be emailing you directly as soon as possible but I will also be including an additional video so you have some visual material as well. Consider it one-on-one -on -one tutoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, getting art advice from somebody who's working in the industry as a full-time artist. Okay you guys that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to give the video a like and if you want to head over and follow me in between videos you can head over to Zeke's Lunchbox on Instagram. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye!